Hi everybody, I'm sorry if the sound is off. I walked out and forgot my mic. So I'm hoping you can hear me well. Anyway, this is video two in my three part series on how to make a pattern from an existing garment, how to cut out that pattern, and then how to sew up the pattern. Those are the three videos. The first one I did last week. Today I'm going to show you how to pin down and cut out the pieces. Um, and the reason why I felt like I needed to make this a video on its own is because I'm not using flat fabric, I'm using another shirt. So I'm making a shirt for a child from a shirt that is too big for me. So um, it's a size 20 woman shirt, that's my source fabric. And then I'm making it like a five, six in a child size. And there's, you know, I feel like I kind of cheated, but then is it really cheating when you write the rules? or is it just being really clever? So you guys decide when we get to that point. As always, if you guys would like to support this channel, you can use the links in the description box to buy me a coffee or to shop my Amazon links, or you can hit the thank you button below this video to make a monetary contribution. And as always, don't forget to share this video so we can get as many views as possible on this channel. Thanks. Okay, in the last video, um, you saw me uh, make the pattern from an existing garment and then I went over and I trimmed some things down and the reason why right or wrong the reason why I did that is because um, they weren't even the sides um, so I also trimmed it down because um, it this collar my grandson's collar didn't fit on the collar that I had even after I took the seam allowances out. So I trimmed it down so that it would fit. And I want you guys to notice, um, and it's all about design, that my grandson's shirt was like, I'm gonna say a size five, I think, and this shirt was a size 20. So the there's not much of a difference in the depth of the collar. Um, but you can see that there is a difference in the length. So that's why I trimmed it down. This is a shoot from the hip. I've kind of done things like this before, but um, I'm making it out of this fabric and this shirt because I don't wear the shirt anyway because it collects all kinds of lint. And so if I mess up, nothing's lost. I didn't put any money into it. And then um, also because I don't have the interfacing for the cuffs and the collar, so I'm using this cuff and collar um, so that you know I'll have the interfacing that's already inside it. I'll just have to remember which one goes on the outside. So now that I have got all the pieces cut out, I am going to... Um, just pin it down and cut all the pieces out of the fabric. Now you can see right here, even just a, a hair of it is off. I'm not worried about it because I have a seam allowance. It's not going to affect that. It's just trimming off what would already be trimmed off anyway. Okay, what I wanted to point out here before I go any further is you notice I had two, um, I had bits of fabric on each side because I still wanted the center front to be the center front or the center of the collar, not center front, um, so that the it's on grain still. So that's something I have to keep in mind. 
Okay, this is the collar stand, and I'm using this this collar stand as well because um, again, I don't have the interfacing. Now this is not. the center. You can see where I cut some off, so I need to make sure that I center this right as well. And it looks to be about the same. You know what? I forgot to check. Sorry, I forgot to trim this off. And I'm not cutting off a whole lot, just enough to um, make it even. You can see there's just a little bit right here. Um, one of the mistakes I made when um, creating the pattern is I forgot to put the notches in. Okay, I, you know, actually I did right here. So let me just move these notches out to the outer side, out part, the outside, sorry. I know I forgot to mark the other things, the other pieces, so I'm going to have to do that. Okay, on the front pieces I and the back pieces, I took out the hem and the darts because I wanted to make sure I was going to have plenty of um, room on the shirt because when I laid the pattern pieces out, um, it didn't have enough room here. So I took these out and it looks good. It looks like I'm gonna have enough room now. Another mistake I made, um, it's not so bad on the shirt front, back and sleeve because um, the center front is my grain line, but like, and I guess it really doesn't matter for the collar and the cuff because I actually cut it out on the fabric I, I'm using the actual piece, so I guess I made out on that one. But when you're drafting a pattern, you do have to make sure you put your grain lines in so that um, your finished product won't be tweaky and warpy um, 
where it shouldn't be which would be like you would probably notice it just in the general fit and then like side seams or the center front Now this right here comes down straight, but for some reason this shirt curls forward right here. So I am not going along with that, with that line. And my fabric is not even. So I have to adjust that. When I took this shirt apart, I realized just how poorly everything lined up. And I was kind of shocked, but I don't know why I'm shocked because this is why I hate shopping. You know, a lot of cheaper stores, they're cheap for a reason. And the reason is the quality, either of the fabric or of the cut of the fabric. Um, I've had to take shirts from really cheap stores and straighten the grain on them because they're so bad. So that looks like it's going to work. So that looks like it's going to work. Okay, now I, I created the pattern for this little slit in the sleeves, but I think I wanna cheat and make, and use the one that's already in here. 
So I have to decide if that's what I'm going to do. I mean, the shirt's not for sale. And me being the seamstress and designer, I can do whatever I want. So I wish it was, I kind of wish it was live so I can ask you guys what you think I should do. But it's not. So I have to make a decision. I'm going to make sure they're even. Okay, so this is the uh, slit that I want to keep right here, just so I don't have to do that. But I'm kind of wondering, am I going to throw the grain off if I do this? And I don't know. I think if I do it like, okay, so see how this does like this? I might have to lighten this up. You know that's off grain. That's off grain. That's off grain. It's getting better. See, they're not stretching. So that's not off grain. There is a slight stretch in the fabric. <sighs> Should I do it? Should I not? Should I do it? Should I not? I have an idea. I'm going to fold this on the grain. I'm going to crease it and then try to align it to the crease in the paper sleeve and we'll see how that works out. Okay, do you guys see the crease? Now this comes down to a curve, but this one doesn't. And I think I'm not going to worry about that. So if I lay this here, this down here, oh my gosh, short nails, I can't pick up anything now. This is one and one sixteenth inch off the line, so I'm going to put a pin in it here. Now it's less. Um, where that line? Oh yes, that's correct. Sorry. So up here, I'm going to make sure it's the same, and hopefully that will allow me to cheat without messing everything up. Hopefully that'll work, guys. All right, here goes nothing or here goes everything. Now, like I said, this is, this, if it's, it's a flop, it's no big deal because it didn't cost me anything and it's fabric I really don't like, but it also gives me a chance to test this out. My lights keep going dim, sorry guys. Ever since I got these LED lights, if more than one thing is running in the house, it pulls on the lights and it's annoying.
Now this is where I forgot to mark my pattern. The two notches here and the one notch here. So I didn't do anything with the cuffs yet because I wasn't sure how wide they were. Now I don't have to worry about grain here because there's no curves, it's just a square. So I'm going to cut off the buttonholes and then I'm going to um, open them up and press them. So it looks like it goes like that. Sorry you guys, my camera keeps moving. Hope nobody gets motion sickness. Okay. Gosh, I see clothes being made in the store and it's like, oh, theirs is way off too. It almost made me makes me not feel bad. Okay. I'm going to go and turn this, turn the, or I'm going to go press these out, press the seam allowances out and see if I need to make changes to the um, pattern. Okay. Um, it doesn't look like his cuff is going to fit on here. So I'm going to do a little redesign on his cuff. So it needs to be two and five eighths inches. And that's, that's with the seam allowance. So whatever seam allowance I use, uh, will just give it more, um, We'll give it a bigger, bigger cuff. going to make it two and a half inches. So it's just a little bit smaller than the two and five eighths. And I know this seems weird, but you know, you are the designer when you do something like this. So now we're going to have to work on this corner. Do I want to do it this way? I think there's really not going to be much choice in how I want to design that edge. So I'll just leave it. Just kind of clean it up if I can. something to make a nice curve here. Okay, now we have a curve. Now, because these are supposed to be two different pieces, um, I have to make sure I leave room to cut off here. Thank you. 
Now looking at here, um, it doesn't, it, this is a really, really thin interfacing. So it's on both pieces. So it doesn't matter when I um, get it sewn up, which side is the outside. Okay, the next one is the back and I want to try and make enough room to hopefully get the yoke out of this because the yoke piece isn't big enough for both. In fact, watch this. This is the piece from the size 20 and I, I could have, let me see, I left the seam allowance here, but I cut it off here and here. But look at this. Because of the neckline, it doesn't fit there very well. And so if I move it over, I could probably squeeze it out, but I have a center back right here. So this shirt will not be able to have um, the double yoke piece in the back. I'll have, I'll have to serge it. So I'll place this one as far down as I can and then use that for the yoke.
all the pieces are cut out. I really, really, really want to find another piece for the back yoke. And if I can, I will put one in, but if not, I'll just leave it. So next is to get these pieces pinned together and sewn up. If you like that video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, share it so that we can get more views on this video. Thanks.